2005 MySpace. Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, my name is Katie and welcome to Katie Does Travel. I post new videos every single week about being an introverted solo female backpacker and I love to share my travel experiences with you so you can also go out and do it as well. If that sounds like something you'd love to watch, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. It is free and I would love to have you join the family. So today I am actually not in a new country to me. I've actually been here before, but I am in a new city. So welcome to Munich, Germany. If you've been following me for a while, you know I've actually been to Germany. I came for the first time back in 2018, but I've never been to Munich before and I'm very, very excited to be here. Uh, if you saw the dates for this and you know a little bit about Munich and a little bit about Germany, you will actually know that it is currently Oktoberfest. It is the last week of the fest. And yes, I am here for it, or at least it's part of the reason why I'm here in Munich. I'm here for an entire week and no, I will not be going to Oktoberfest every single day. Um, but I will be going to Oktoberfest for a couple days and actually I'm going to be heading over there shortly just to walk around the grounds and then I'm going to go find a dirndl and then I'm going to just maybe do a couple of other things in Munich today. I am very tired if you can't tell. I arrived this morning on an overnight bus from Luxembourg and it was a very long journey. I am here now actually at an Airbnb because it was significantly cheaper than any hostel that I could find because I actually booked this back in early July and I was late to the game. So anyway, I'm staying in Airbnb. Um, the host is currently at work. I'm just in a small room, but she is very nice and she so graciously allowed me to check in early so I could shower and put on a little bit of makeup. Anyway, enough about that. Like I said, I am here in Munich for a week. I'm excited to explore the city and some other surrounding areas, but I am also really excited for Oktoberfest. I am hopefully meeting up with a friend that I actually met when I was in Australia. He lives here in Munich. I met him in the Wit Sundays. And hopefully we will be able to link up and go to Oktoberfest one day with his friends. I'm going to head into Munich City Center now. I'm going to take you along and let's go check out Oktoberfest, walk around the grounds, and then let's go find a dirndl and see what else we get up into. All right, let's go. So I went over to Oktoberfest and let me just tell you, this was, I know it doesn't look very busy, but I tell you it was sensory overload. There's so much going on and I was so excited to be there after years and years of waiting and research. It's a lot bigger than I thought. <laughs> Holy crap. But it's like a big like a state fair but on steroids. It's crazy. So on this day, I actually didn't do any rides or I didn't go and drink in any of the beer halls. I did go and just kind of get the lay of the land because I knew I was going to be there a couple of days later in the week. I did walk through some of the tents just to get a vibe check, just to see which ones I wanted to go to later on in the week. Uh, there were some that I didn't really plan on wanting to go into or drinking in later in the week, but I still wanted to see them. So yeah, it was just a really good time. And no, it doesn't look very busy because or crazy just because it was kind of the early afternoon, but trust me, it does get a lot busier. So then I actually went that day to check out and find a dirndl. I went to a couple of the resale shops because I was trying to find one that was used uh, or gently used, but ultimately I did end up getting one that was still at the resale shop, but definitely a, in a bit marked down, but definitely new. So you'll just, you'll see shortly which one I decided on. <music> Good morning. 
is October Fest Day, day one for me. I am super excited. It, I felt like I was going to bed. Um, when I was going to bed last night, I felt like it was Christmas. So anyway, um, that's probably a little dramatic. But anyway, I, I'm not going to go until about lunchtime, so like noonish, because I didn't want to spend all day there. But um, yeah, I you can tell I am not ready. Um, but I'm going to go for a quick run and then come back here and get ready. And I have my dirndl and everything all set up and I'm super excited. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully I can meet some people because I am a little nervous going solo. Um, but yeah, I'm excited and I'll bring you along. And hopefully it's just, it's a really good day. <sighs> okay, I look terrible. <laughs> um, hi. It's Friday. Um, I'm going to try to get through this without crying. So I'm going to pause this now. If you don't want to hear a very sad, rambly speech, I'll put the timestamp here as to where you can skip ahead. But I kind of wanted to come on later just because it's been a few months. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. And I just wanted to talk about this real quick. So you'll find out here in a moment that basically my phone died the day before, before I even had a chance to go to Oktoberfest. So basically the phone just was fine when I woke up and then I went for a run and it died. So uh, I was very upset because at the time I didn't know if the phone was going to be able to be replaced or fixed or anything. I thought I lost everything. And I know that videos and photos, it's, it's a silly thing to get upset about. And I know that now and I understand that. And I definitely learned my lesson. Um, but I was pretty upset at the time. But again, looking back now, and we actually were able to not only fix the phone, but also get everything back. So you're still seeing all the footage that I had taken on my phone. So nothing was lost. But at the time, I wasn't sure. I didn't know until I came back home about seven weeks later if I was able to be fixed. But anyway, so I know it's going to sound very pathetic and sad with me talking in these clips. Uh, and I kind of was going back and forth whether I wanted to keep it or not, but I did keep it ultimately just because I wanted to show that travel is not always sunshine and roses, but I also realized that there's a ton of terrible things going on and your phone breaking is not the end of the world and losing those memories is not the end of the world, but I did learn some valuable lessons through the experience and that's why I ultimately decided to keep it, but yeah, so be kind in the comments. I know now, again, looking back on it months and months later that it all worked out and it was all fine. There's much worse things going on in the world, but yeah. So anyway, without further ado, here are the clips and let's continue. You may have noticed in the past couple of vlogs or probably explained it by now, but I lost a lot of not only video and photos from this trip, from the last, just this year. Yesterday, my phone just died. Um, it, I woke up, it was fine, it was fully charged, I was doing things on it. And then I went for a run and I had my phone, like I'd done hundreds of times, in my spy belt. This is the belt, it has a pouch and you can put your phone in it or whatever. But I put my phone in it and I ran and I carry my phone with me when I'm traveling on these runs for safety. But um, I came back from the run and the phone was off. It was a black screen um, and I haven't been able to turn it back on. And I was supposed to go to Oktoberfest yesterday and I was really excited. It was the first time. In a very long time, I actually was genuinely happy. And um, obviously I didn't go. Um, I went to the Apple store in Munich. And basically they said it's either water damage, which I don't think it is because I didn't really sweat. And even just a little bit of water like that, I don't, like, I don't know. 
know, it's not like I spilled my entire drink or anything on it or jumped into a lake with it. But anyway, um, yeah, it, um, they said that or it's the motherboard and that just died. Rotten luck, I guess. But with that being said, I don't have a phone. I've lost everything because I'm stupid and I didn't, I didn't back up anything because I'm just stupid. So take that as a lesson to pay for the additional storage with Apple or whatever phone you have to back up your stuff. Luckily, you know, all my Australia stuff was already backed up in the first week of my trip. I had already gotten all that stuff off my phone, but I lost all of Ghent, all of Luxembourg, and my first few days here in Munich. So yeah, um, I don't have a phone. My parents ex <clears throat> sent yesterday a new phone. Well, it's my dad's old phone, but um, they're sending me a, a new phone for me. Um, but like I said, it's my dad's old phone. So it was supposed to get here tomorrow by noon, but the current tracking is saying not until Monday afternoon and I'm nervous that it's not going to even get here by then. And Tuesday's a holiday here. And I leave on Tuesday as well. So I don't really know what to do. The Apple store's like, well, you can buy a new phone and then just return it within 14 days. But I'm nervous, knowing my luck, how it's been, that I'm going to do something to the phone and they're not going to take it back. So I don't really know what to do. I've already been struggling a lot on this trip, a lot in the past few months. Um, and I just like kind of want to go home, which I know doesn't solve anything, but I'm just so... I'm just in a really bad headspace, like not even just with this, just in general, just in a really bad, bad headspace. And I'm trying to fake it, I'm trying to be happy, but I'm just not. Um, and this was just kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back. But for now, I do have to do something. Um, my parents want me to go to Oktoberfest today, so I guess I'm going to try. I just am not in a very good mood. Not in very good spirits. I was also supposed to meet up with a friend tomorrow, but I have absolutely no way of contacting them. Because they can't get onto Instagram on my computer because I need authorization code, which I don't have. Because I can't get into my phone. And I can't do WhatsApp because... I can't download it onto my computer without having a code for my phone. Um, yeah, and like, you know, there's, the only way I can stay in contact with my family back at home is going on my computer and using Skype or Google Voice. But yeah, when I'm out and about, I feel very vulnerable because I don't have something in case of an emergency and I can only go to certain places that I know how to navigate to because I don't have maps or um, I guess I can get a physical map but I'll be honest I don't know how to read a map very well um just guess that's my age but um, anyway I know it's like oh she's just complaining I'm Anyway, um, clearly I was crying pretty much all day yesterday from just sadness with losing everything on my phone to just not, just being in a really bad headspace in general. So, <laughs> I look terrible, like more, worse than usual, so, um. Try to pull myself up by the bootstraps and 
slog my way through Oktoberfest today. Um, but yeah. Sorry, the vlogs suck. And, um, So before I actually went into Oktoberfest again, I wanted to check out a couple things in the city center. I wanted to check out a few churches. So I just walked in there. Um, yes, I was in my dirndl, but whatever, you know, it, I really wanted to see these sites and I didn't want to take a second trip to come. So anyway, I saw this church. I also went to go check out the Glockensfield, the clock, uh, the I have some videos from later in the week because I actually ended up seeing it again. So I'll put them here. But the, these videos coming up are from later in the week. But you can actually hear and see the little statues going around. After quickly seeing the clock, I then went over to St. Peter's Church real quick. It was under renovation, but you can still see the most beautiful ceiling. I definitely, definitely recommend it. It's free to walk in, just obviously, you know, dress modestly. I was in my dirndl, so I, I, I was fine, but yes, definitely check out this church because the ceiling is probably one of the top, let's say, five churches I've ever seen. Then it was time to go to Oktoberfest, and... I'm going to let some of the videos and such, I'm not going to do a ton of commentary, but it, let's just say it was a fun day. Okay, so I'm here at Oktoberfest, this is the entrance, and we're going to go in and explore without a phone. <laughs> so wish me luck, and I will take you along. I did it. 
gonna drink alone. <laughs> So I will say the rides at Oktoberfest are definitely a bit on the pricey side. So really just pick a couple or you can go on family day because I believe they are half priced. But definitely go into the official Oktoberfest website to check what day those family days are and if the rides are half priced. But I'm fairly sure they are. But they're a little bit expensive otherwise and some of them are a little bit, I won't lie, a little creepy. I do so much in a dog, la 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 la. So after checking out some of the rides, I did walk around trying to decide which tent I wanted to go into because I knew that because I was by myself, I wanted to make sure I could find some people and have a good day. It's a famous hill that you don't want to end up on. Uh, when you had too much to drink and you're passed out, you don't want to end up here. But you can go into, let me move that, there we go. You can go into the head of the statue there. So I'm gonna try to do that real quick. And then I'm gonna go into a tent, I think. I'm just trying to finish drinking my water. So anyway, let's go see if we can get in there. So I was told it was free to go up there, but it's actually five euros. Not sure if they're pulling my leg or whatever, but anyway, I decided not to because I went on that other ride and got a pretty good view, but a little bit um, nerve wracking. But maybe I'll go up there tomorrow when I come back. Um, but for now, almost don't come water. So I'm gonna decide which tent I want to go into and then we'll see what happens the rest of the day. So as I mentioned, I was there alone, so I knew that I just had to make friends with people, and I ended up in the Lovenbro, I'm sorry, I'm saying that wrong, but the, basically the Lion Tent, which is really well known for having a little bit of a younger vibe, uh, a lot of tourists, and so it's just a really good mix of people, but I actually ended up just finding a group of German guys and ended up just at their at their table so it was really good i actually also met a lovely couple from atlanta and just honestly a ton of people but we ended up leaving the tent a bit and then came back and that's really when the night started it was very great vibes pretty much a big party and everything that you think about oktoberfest was here this is what i was fully expecting for oktoberfest and it did not disappoint I believe the last beer is served at 10 30 and then they closed at 11 30 so honestly we ended up staying that late 
And then my lovely new German friends actually helped me get to the train. So I didn't miss the last train back. Because again, I didn't have a phone. So I was kind of doing everything by memory. And I will why my memory was a little bit fuzzy at this point. But it was definitely a very fun day. And then the next day, I went back and did it again. The original intention was to not do Oktoberfest two days in a row. But given the phone situation... And I was meeting up with my friend on this day. This was Saturday. I really had no choice. But Saturday was significantly busier than Friday. So if I had to make any recommendation, try to avoid the weekends if at all possible. I knew this, but this was just the only day I could really meet up with my friend. So we ended up at the Hofbrau tent. Uh, and again, good vibes. Very much of a party atmosphere. And it was just a great time. <laughs> Oktoberfest, I am done. I am done. It was a great experience. One that I mostly remember. <laughs> but today, um, I slept in a little and then I actually had to do um, an interview for something. So I just got done with that and now I'm going to just go out, try to just do a little exploring, try to find some new sunglasses because someone took mine. And I know exactly who did, <laughs> but uh, I couldn't, like, I, they were supposed to give back to me and they didn't. So. I gotta go find new sunglasses. Luckily, the ones I had were not expensive. But anyway, um, so yeah, I'm gonna go today and uh, I can't remember where I'm gonna go. I'll put it here. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go do that and then I'm gonna come back here and hopefully go to bed early because two days of Oktoberfest in a row, which was not what I wanted to do, but what I had to do. Um, I need some sleep. I need some proper sleep. So anyway, let's go. Let's go explore a little bit today. So after two very hectic and crazy days at Oktoberfest, I needed a day to relax. So honestly, I went back into Munich in the afternoon and just honestly walked around a bit. I ended up at this theater, which was absolutely beautiful, but it is actually a reconstruction. So the original theater was destroyed in World War II, but... Although the theater was bombed during World War II, the gilded boxes were put into storage so they could be reused for the renovation. So while you're not seeing the absolute original theater, you're seeing parts of it. And it is absolutely stunning. I definitely recommend taking a trip to this, this theater because it is beautiful and it wasn't that expensive to go inside and see. Then I went over to the Hofgarten and it was a beautiful day, a little bit warm, but I mean, honestly, I've pretty much lucked out with the weather in Munich this year for Oktoberfest. So honestly, probably when I go back, it's going to be crap weather, but you know what? It's okay. Uh, but I just walked around this garden and then I also went over to the English garden where there are a ton of ducks and swans. But actually, if you go to the garden, did you know you could actually surf in Munich. That is right. I am not lying. So you can actually, I don't know how to surf, but you can go surfing in this water area underneath this bridge. I'm pretty sure the water's fine and clean, but uh, it was pretty fun actually watching them and, uh, and it definitely drew, draws a crowd. So you will find them for sure. And then on my final day in Munich, I went over to check out the grounds at Niffenberg Palace. I did not end up going inside the palace just because I will be honest, I spent a little bit or a lot more than I wanted to spend on the first day of Oktoberfest. So I was a little bit over budget, but you know what? I'll come back to Munich and I'll check out the inside. The gardens though are free to walk around and are very much worth it, especially on a beautiful day like I had. So definitely, take a few hours to walk around but 
if you want to see the inside of the palace and some of the other houses on the property, you will need to purchase a ticket. Um, I don't remember how much it was, but it wasn't terribly expensive, but it was just more than I wanted to spend at the time. Hello, so I have a working phone again. Thank you so much to my parents for sending me my dad's old phone. So I have something to get me through the rest of the trip. Um, I don't like these sunglasses. I also had to buy these sunglasses because someone took mine at Oktoberfest. But anyway, uh, today is my last day here in Munich. Unfortunately, I had to skip something I really wanted to do, um, but I'm gonna come back next year. I'm kind of manifesting that, putting that out into the universe. I'm gonna come back next year um, for the fest and to do some things that I had to skip out on. But today I'm at Niffenberg Palace. I don't think I said that right. I don't know if I'm actually gonna go into the palace um, but I'm walking the gardens and the grounds right now, and it is very pretty. So, anyway, I didn't vlog earlier just because I was so preoccupied with getting my phone. But, yeah, I'm just trying to enjoy the last day I have here. And then continue on with the trip. I'm already almost at the halfway point, which is crazy. Um, and it has been an up and down roller coaster. Um, but, yeah, so... Let's explore, have one more full day here in Munich and then see what we get up to and hopefully we can get some footage back. But if not, I don't know what this vlog's been, but hopefully it's been at least somewhat enjoyable. But anyway, I'm gonna walk around and explore. That was pretty much my time in Munich. I had a fantastic time despite the issues with the phone. Oktoberfest was everything I wanted and expected and then some. I had an incredible time. The people I met were just amazing. They helped me out when I didn't have a phone. It was great seeing my friend. So I definitely want to come back to not only Oktoberfest but just to Munich in general because I just really fell in love with the city and I definitely am hoping to be back next year with a functioning phone. And I definitely plan to do a video uh, talking a little bit more about Oktoberfest probably sometime next year. So be on the lookout for that. It probably won't be until like mid next year, but it'll be like a first timer's guide to Oktoberfest so you can check it out. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe, give it a thumbs up and follow me on my social media channels. And with that, I'll see you in, in the next video. And remember as always to wander far and wander often. Good morning from Saxon, Switzerland National Park here in Germany.